Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Tasneem Abrahams. I'm the founder of the Private Practice Growth Club. And on this channel, I share tips, tools, and tutorials for health professionals starting and growing a private practice in South Africa. One of the topics that I like to talk about is optimizing operations, both in your personal life and in your business, in order to get the most out of your productive time and productivity. And one area that causes people a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, frustration around productivity is email. Now, if you Google or YouTube search how to get control of your inbox, you're going to find a whole lot of information about something called Inbox Zero. Inbox Zero is often misunderstood as the need to have zero emails in your inbox. The term was first coined by a man named Merlin Mann on his blog and podcast, 43 Folders. It's important to note, though, that Mann's main goal was never to achieve a constantly empty inbox. In fact, Mann himself reportedly has a pretty messy inbox. The goal of Inbox Zero is actually just to declutter your inbox, to reduce the overwhelm. And the goal is to spend less time in your email. If you've ever experienced the loss of productivity that comes from constantly checking your email, you'll understand the intention behind the Inbox Zero concept. But when you focus on always maintaining Inbox Zero or always maintaining zero emails in your inbox, you're spending as much time worrying about your empty inbox as you would over a full one. So your goal shouldn't be inbox zero. Your goal should be what it's intended to achieve, which is to spend only the minimal amount of time possible in your email so that you can prioritize your time on taking action on the things that are most important in your life or in your business. Inbox zero was never intended to be the goal, but rather the tool or tactic intended as a method for processing information that comes into your inbox. Merlin Mann identified five actions that you can take on an email. You can delete or archive, you can delegate, you can respond, you can defer, or you can do. These are five actions you can take for each email in your box, but how you execute on those actions or how you set up your email in order to execute on those actions will depend entirely on your unique personality type. It will depend on your information processing preferences, even on your sensitive style. If you search Inbox Zero, you will find thousands upon thousands of videos and blogs showing you how to achieve Inbox Zero. Some will suggest using folders, some will say folders are a waste of time, some will suggest using labels and filters, some will even suggest you change the entire layout of your email on desktop. There are also even rules about how often you should check your email and at which times of day it's best to check it. But these are all very prescriptive and you need to choose a way that works for you because in reality there is no right way to manage the information that lands in your inbox. We all have our own unique style that we've developed over time to meet our varying needs. What is important is to find an email management workflow that works for you. So what type of email user are you and what email hacks will work best for you? Well, the way I see it, you get four different types of email users you get the overwhelm avoider. Now this person uses their inbox as a to-do list. So having unread emails can be very overwhelming. They check their emails way more often than they should and then spend an even longer time in their email working through their email to avoid feeling overwhelmed by all the things that needs to be done. Now Inbox Zero is a great solution for the overwhelm avoider because it helps to reduce the clutter and gives them a framework to process email in a systematic, logical way. This person should read the email, send a response if it calls for one, and then either delete it because it's no longer useful or archive it in a specific folder. This person will also benefit from having short, dedicated email checking times at specific times of the day. There are many people out there who prescribe that you should only be checking email once or twice a day, no more than that. That can cause great anxiety for the overwhelm avoider because they'll be constantly worrying, are there emails that are in there that means there's things that they need to do that they are missing, that they are not doing, and that can cause them a lot of anxiety. So for this person, checking only once a day is not advisable but they do still need to have dedicated time slots. So it could be that they check um, on the hour or every two hours, but they'll need to check more often, but within dedicated time slots. The next type of email user is the procrastinating perfectionist. This person loves to organize. They like sorting, filing, planning, but they struggle to take action. They know they need to take action, but they are often crippled, crippled by perfectionism, which leads to procrastination. 
or they struggle to do things that are unpleasant, difficult or boring, which also leads to procrastination. For this person, having a million folders and labels can be a curse because they will spend more time sorting and organizing the emails, making it look pretty, color coding it, attaching labels, than actually doing the important work that needs to be done outside of the email inbox. They rarely ever delete anything, so they often have many unread emails neatly filed away in color coded folders. So what will work for this type is to use email features like auto advance, filters, auto rules, and an integrated task scheduling app like Google Tasks that actually helps him schedule tasks that they need to do and helps him take action. The one-touch rule of delete or archive, delegate, respond, defer, or do will also benefit this person and they should have a dedicated time to check emails no more than twice per day. So for this person, having the rule of only checking mornings and afternoons or only checking once a day really will help with having them check less and do more. Next, you have the information hoarder. This person often has many browser tabs open and even more bookmarks. They have files and folders of unread PDFs and downloads and even more of these sitting in unread emails. Never read, never downloaded. Their desire to consume information is far greater than their capacity to do so. They never delete any emails either for fear of missing out on something important or fear they might delete something they will need in the future. Solutions for this person is to use a service like Unroll.me which rolls up subscription emails like newsletters and product updates into a digest and the auto archive feature which automatically archives emails that they've opened. This person definitely won't benefit from complicated folders and labels. They'll just get distracted by all the pretty folders and labels and not end up doing any work. And finally, you get the anti-emailer. This person either hates technology, are afraid of it, or they are slow adopters of technology. And this extends to mobile apps. They prefer face-to-face -face or voice communication and they tend to have the belief that if it's important enough, the person trying to communicate with them or reach them will reach out by phone. They only send and check email when absolutely necessary or when they are expecting something from someone and generally don't like to have the email synced to a mobile phone, so they always prefer to check email on a desktop. This person's email is a jumbled mess. Now, good solutions for this type is to have minimal set times to check email, make use of auto rules and filters. Minimal use of technology, so using tools like Unroll.me is not going to work for this person because it's just another technology solution and they are anti-technology. Now, of course, you probably do get many more different types of email user types. This is just, in my opinion, what the different ways that people process and use email. And sometimes you could possibly be even a combination of more than one of them and have bits and pieces of each one of them. But at the end of the day, it's important to remember that email is a communication tool. It's not a calendar, it's not a to-do list, and it's definitely not meant to be a storage system. So the first step to better inbox management is to have self-awareness. First, you need to understand how your brain is wired. What makes you anxious? What helps you be more productive? And then build a system around your unique style of how you process information and how you can be more productive. Now, I will be sharing some tips, tricks and tutorials on all the different suggested solutions, how to use folders, how to use labels, and yes, even how to use the Inbox Zero system for email management, if that's something that appeals to you. I'll also be sharing how you can use tools like Unroll.me and productivity tools like the Google suite of tools to help you be more productive. So if this is the kind of content that you like, please consider giving this video a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications of new videos.